chapter 19, Mishnah 1. As in the previous chapter, the Mishnah will discuss a bed made of a frame, a headboard, a footboard, and two sideboards, and four legs, with a netting of ropes woven lengthwise and widthwise onto the frame on which the bedding was placed. Our Mishnah discusses a bed that became Tame as an Avatuma, but had been taken apart to the extent that it could no longer function as a bed. It is thus no longer Tame. Nevertheless, when a Tame bed is taken apart with the intention of later putting it back together, the law is that its original Tuma returns once it is put back together. To avoid this, the owner is taking apart the bed further in order to immerse all of its pieces. In this way, the bed will not become Tame when it is put back together. The Mishnah addresses the status of a person who is taking apart the bed. One who takes apart a bed in order to immerse it in a mikvah, since it does not fit in the mikvah as it is, or one who touches the ropes of a bed that was tame and had been taken apart, is tahor, even though the bed was originally tame. The person who touched the pieces of the bed is tahor because the pieces are not tame at this time, since, as explained in the introduction to the Mishnah, the bed has been taken apart previously to the extent that it cannot be used in its current state. And in the second case, the person who touched the ropes of the bed is tahor, because once the bed was taken apart, the ropes became tahor, since they are no longer part of a kli that is tame. The Mishnah now discusses the law of ropes that are attached to the bed, and addresses how much of the rope needs to be woven on the bed frame for the rope to be considered connected, and thus be tame along with the bed. At what point is the rope considered connected to the bed? From when three rows are woven on the bed. The Mishnah now presents a case where three rows have been woven but the rope was not long enough to complete the netting of the entire bed. The person making the bed therefore tied a second rope to the first to make it longer. Thus far, however, only part of the first rope has been woven onto the bed. The remaining length of the first rope and the entire length of the second rope still hang loose. The bed became tame, and since three rows had been formed from the first rope, it is regarded as attached and becomes tame as well. The Mishnah addresses the tuma status of a person who touches either rope. One who touches the rope from the knot that connects the two ropes and inward, i.e. the part of the first rope extending from the knot toward the bed, including both the loose part and the part that has been woven, is tame. However, if he touches the rope from the knot and outward, i.e. any part of the second rope, he is tahor. Even though it is attached to the first rope, the second rope is not considered attached to the bed. When the ends of two ropes are tied together, they are not knotted at their very ends. Some of the rope is left out past the knot so that the knot should not come apart. The ends of the ropes that extend past the knot are called the strands of the knot. The Mishnah discusses a case where two ropes were knotted together and then woven into the bed, and addresses whether someone who touches the strands of the knot of the tame bed becomes tame. Regarding the strands of the knot, one who touches the part necessary for the knot is tame. The part that is necessary for the knot has the status of the rope since without it the knot would come apart. Thus, if the bed becomes tame, the part of the strand that is necessary for the knot will also become tame. However, any length of strand that extends beyond the necessary amount does not have the status of the rope. It does not become tame and will not make tame one who touches it. How much of the strand is necessary for the knot? Rabbi Yehuda says three finger widths, i.e. three thumb breadths. The string that extends beyond that point is not considered necessary for the knot and will not become tame together with the knot.